first time the music started to get taken out of schools was the first depression. So you had that whole wave, had nothing to do, just people didn't have money. They took arts out, mm -hmm. curriculum. Mm -hmm. That time, a lot of people played pianos, music was part. Then that continued through, through the 19th, then we had World War II. People started to resegregate along certain lines, a lot of suburban schools, urban mm -hmm. schools. We started to get this new terminology, a new America. Then the music changed. Then you had Sputnik and the whole kind of math and science and the Russians are beating us. That was the next wave of, we don't need to know anything about our arts. We need to figure out how we can compete with people in math and science. We still are doing that, except now instead of the Russians, people we're afraid of, now it's the Chinese people studying all over China. Right. <laughs> and we, we are not studying enough. Right. Now, it's a national problem that could, it is not as difficult to solve as we think, but it is impossible to solve without national involvement. So if it doesn't include a jobs programs, if it doesn't include all the things, because a school cannot be a, a psych, psych, give psychological counseling to 35 kids. A teacher cannot do it. Yeah. It's just not possible. So people say, oh, teachers, it is. You know, it's, it's a mere best, but it's really like a national problem that we as a nation have got to embrace and say, at a certain point, we have to put something back into something that we always took out of. Right. But while we're waiting, I mean, that's the thing, because right. I get frustrated, you know, while we are waiting for the people in power to wake the hell up, you know? Might we, what, right. what might we do while we are waiting for that to happen? Right, and we have a lot of, a lot of, a lot of organizations, like our organization, yeah. Jazz Lincoln Center, we, we're gonna do 140 concerts right. in the New York City Public Schools this year. Wow. Right. We do a lot of teaching, I mean, just, but, but we, we, we are not alone by any stretch of right. imagination. When I'm traveling around the country, I see a person with a band of kids, mm -hmm. a person with their, we drove 70 miles with these 60 kids to right. see y'all play to give them. So right. there are people all over the country who are, we just have to start to demand another level of involvement and engagement with all of our kids and not with just those who, who, can, mm -hmm. who, can, who can pay, or if we have the means to pay for things. Right. I think the first thing is that uh, the, the identity of the musicians and of the music, like my father was, in, in the heart of segregation, he was always the most integrated person I knew. Like, he would listen to Ella Fitzgerald and Barbara Streisand. Mm -hmm. He listened to Bill Evans and Wynton Kelly. He listened to Duke Ellington and Benny Goodman. Like, he, he was very eclectic in his taste and in, 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 in his embrace. He used to always say, y'all want to go back to segregation? Or you want to recreate what we had? You, you got to move in the, you know, we got this. Dizzy Gillespie once told me, he said, man, the music was about integration. So I think that's the first thing. And in terms of our kids and the black, black American kids and the kind of segregated education we have, we have so many challenges at this point, just with, with fundamentals. Yeah, I think the arts, the thing that I really think would, would, would help us and help American kids in general, not because you know the, the, the suburban schools and the white schools, they have more re funds, but they have, a, they have a lot of problems too. Uh, the thing that I think with, with the national movement that we need is a swing dance movement. Because the root of a lot of problems is male-female. Like when you start to exploit that kind of relationship, you're exploiting a 12 or 13, you're, you're making money off of them, you, you, you're giving that type of trash to them. And I'm from New Orleans, so it's never something that shocked me, like can you believe they said bitch or can you believe, <laughs> of course, they, we've been saying that forever. But I, that you could make money off of it in, a, in, a, in your country and that could become your popular music and that your kids could actually, that's their diet. Man, that's a rough diet to give somebody. I don't know that they're going to come back from that. Mm -hmm. So swing dancing teaches like a certain type of respect. And it doesn't preach to you. It's active. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a give and a take. Mm -hmm. You have to listen to music that has development. You learn how to respond to it physically. So my hope for our country, the movement I look at all the time that I think could be successful teaching, this is after years of teaching music now, and mm -hmm. because I feel that if we could get back to that dance, because the dance is a, and if you ever go to a high school dance, my, 16, my, my son is 24 now, when he was 16, he said, man, you got to come to this dance with me. <laughs> so I, I came to the dance with him, and it was like, you know, okay. It was, much, it was on a much lower level than what we used to do. Mm -hmm. And I played th thousands of dances in high school. He said, the deep thing about the dance wasn't the ignorance of what we were dancing. You see what the people your age were doing? He said, they were wishing they were out there. <laughs> and it's just like it's been a collective kind of breakdown, and we maybe don't know that. Like, right. I mean, I don't, I just feel like the dance is, like yeah, and I don't separate the black and the white so much because 
even the white groups of people that you see are very, it's, it's an elite group of people who follow the arts, who get into the music, who keep the culture going. And I, I think it's a national question of national identity at this point. But our kids, yeah, they need to know a lot more about, about the arts, all of our arts. I, but I, I, I would say that, I, I don't know if I think that certain kids need to, you know, learn and embrace certain musical forms on certain instruments. But I would like all American people to be more knowledgeable about what we've done already, where we've come from, you know, to, so that we can walk around while we're right. making whatever kind of music we're making or writing whatever kind of things we're writing and be proud of, because right. before me came so-and-so and she or he did such and such. And to know that, there's a kind of wonderful pride, which, I love, I love you know, that, that comes. Said from yeah, that, so. Right. And to have pride in something great. Right, mm -hmm. right, exactly. Like to actually have pride, I mean, right. I'm proud of Winslow Homer. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm proud of George Gershwin, I am. Yeah. You know, I was proud of him when I was in high school mm -hmm. and played Rhapsody in Blue in the mm -hmm. original orchestration. I said, <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you, George Gershwin, he, we got somebody mm -hmm. here too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Proud of mm -hmm. Aaron Copeland. Mm -hmm. You know, you, I, you, you wanna be proud of something great and the right. pride is the right. Right, right. You know, I've never actually, heard it expressed that way or used it. But I'm gonna put that in my lexicon because that's yeah, true. <laughs> because that pride is important. I mean, yeah. it makes you feel like you can do mm -hmm. something and you're a part of something mm -hmm. great. You're a part of something great, that's right.